Can I get an amen from amen. us? This amen. Amen. Is our God not awesome and good? Amen. I just want you to know, if you don't believe God is doing some amazing things around here, you're not looking hard enough. Amen. You're not looking hard enough. Because He is. He is. And uh, just start looking. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. When I turn on the television and see the sheer volume of television shows these days that are given over to remodeling homes. I try to skirt on by them because that's not the picnic that it sounds. People who, who buy an old house, and I guess Bob Veal is the one that started it years ago with this old house. And you know, I watched a show this week on log cabins where I wanted to say, these people have more money than brains. Set a 27,000 square foot log cabin. Uh, or, or, or maybe they take old clothes and make them look new. You know, shabby chic is in vogue today. Uh, renew old cars. Refresh tired restaurants. Have you seen uh, Chef Robert Irvine and what is Restaurant Impossible, where he goes in, I, I, I like to watch that. I especially like to go to places where I've been, and, and I know they are, and see how he takes these restaurants that are losing thousands of dollars every year, and you know, freshens them up, takes everything out. Uh, I watched a guy in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania last night, and as I was thinking about this message in the scripture, you know, something old was made new. And some of you around will remember a few of the commercials for Earl Shy. Do you remember Earl Shy? Ninety-nine dollars. You'll refresh your car and make it look like new. Well, more or less. And, and I have to admit, it's it's a pretty cool thing to put on new paint on tired old walls and see a, an old room, kind of tired looking room, look like brand new. It's kind of a nice thing to take tired old upholstery and put new coverings on something and all of a sudden you have something that's brand new, or at least it appears to be brand new. It's nice to put a, a new tie with an old jacket and get a fresh <coughs> new look. One of the shows I really enjoy watching just because of the amazing craftsmanship is a show called Overhaul. Now Overhaul is not in production to my knowledge anymore, but the basic theory behind it is people have these tired, old, worn out cars. And they're classic cars. They're beautiful cars. Well, at least in their owner's minds. You know, it might be a 66 Mustang. It, it might be a 69 Hearst 442 that's seen better days. You know, I've seen it go all over the map. And what happens is Chip Foose, an amazing car designer and builder, takes this car and strips it to the bones, pulls everything out of it. And by the time they're done, they've got this hulk of a car and a pile of junk. And from there, he begins the ground up rebuild of this car. So that when he's done overhauling, he took a rusted, beat up, dented, tired up, oil leaking, smoking, maybe not even running car, and hands the keys back to the person, a brand spanking new, sparkly, loud, stereo, thumping, banging car that's one off. Nobody anywhere has one like it. They're gorgeous, classic cars that live again as one of a kind showpieces that anyone would be proud to have. You know, and he, when the show first started, Chip would steal somebody's car. And I told my kids, I said, anytime you want to call Chip Foose and have him overhaul my truck, just go ahead. I'm all for that. The more I think about remodeling and overhauling, the more I realize that there have been times in my own life, and continue to be times in my life, 
when I need to be overhauled. When I need to have the rust knocked out. When I need to have the haze scrubbed off of me. When the ripped upholstery needs to be fixed. There are times when I need God to do a new work in me, both inside and out. I know you all see the outside and know that needs work. But the inside, too. I have a Bible that was given to me years ago. I was a young teen. I think probably about 1976 or 1977 the Bible was given to me. And I passed it on to one of my kids. Not too long ago, I sat down on her bed and my eyes fell on that Bible in her bookshelf. And I picked it up and I began to flip through that Bible. And I saw in my teenage handwriting, it's gone downhill every year I've studied since, in my teenage handwriting, significant events and dates. One of them being November 11th, 1977. It's a passage in Matthew uh, that I, the note reads, under the, word, under the preaching of these words by my dad, the Lord saved me, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Oddly enough, I find a very similar note from about three years later. And, and other notes where God did these milestone works in my life. And I thought about them and reflected on them and realized those are the testimonies to God overhauling my life. Overhauling me. Making me into something rather than being a tired, worn out, beat up, joyless, whatever. Making me into the person that he wants me to be. Now, just in case you look up here or I've said something that you haven't liked or, or done something or understand he's not finished with me yet. You understand that, right? And I think if we were really brutally honest with one another, we all have those experiences. Or need to have those experiences. Because I think there's times in your life, maybe there have been times in your life this week when you did something, or you said something, or you thought something that you knew wasn't compatible with God in you. Thank you for wanting that. But maybe there's been things going on in you that you knew that's not God in me. That's not very much like Christ. Maybe you reacted some way. Maybe you chalked it up to just a quirk of nature. Well, it's just a bad habit. Things that I do because I'm who I am. But deep down in your life, you know that there's something more in your life that God wants to do in you. Maybe there's something that just, well, he wants to do away with. That's what Paul's talking about this morning in 2 Corinthians. You see, as he begins that passage in the last chapter, or the last verses of chapter 5, he starts in verse 16 by giving us something fundamental, where we need to begin this journey of, of him overhauling us. And that is that we need to reckon life in a whole new way. You see, we fall guilty so very often to the the, the temptation to say, well, that's just who I am. That's how God made me. He, he made me passionate and hot-blooded, so I get angry easy, and that's okay, because that's how he made me. Well, the truth of the matter is, it's not how he made us at all. It's the effect of sin in our life. And we know it. And we get angry. And I don't mean angry because of unrighteousness in the world. You go out and you see homelessness, you should be angry. You see uh, people being taken advantage, we should be angry. We 
see the, the plans of God being thwarted by evil, we should be angry. I'm talking about angry because we don't get our own way. That kind of anger. Right? We've got those speech patterns that don't honor and glorify God. And we know. We know we're kind of like one of those tired old cars in Chip Foose's garage. Dents around the edges. Floors rusted out. Engines leaking. Paul's reminding us that there's a new way that we need to reckon life. And it's not according to the plan of this world. It's according to Jesus Christ. Because you see, we have a Savior. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Allison, can you put 2 Corinthians chapter 5 back up on the screen, please? In verse 17 it says, If any person is in Christ, he is a tired, worn out, rusty hulk of a car with dings and dents around the edges yeah. and characteristics that are just how God made us. Is that not what it says on that screen up there? No. No, it says, if any man is a new creation, if any man is in Christ, be in Christ. By the way, that word be is significant there. You see it in brackets, it's in the Greek. You don't just say, I'm in Christ. You are in Christ. That word to be is important. It means you live in your being is drawn from Christ. Your life is drawn from Christ. Your breath is drawn from Christ. And if you be in Christ, you are a new creation. Amen. You see, that's the new way of reckoning things. We are a new creation because when we claim the name of Jesus Christ, we open our hearts and allow Him to move into us and get rid of the old and replace 
replace it with the new. In other words, to say that we're followers of Jesus Christ, to experience His grace, is to say, Lord, here's the keys to my life. Why don't you overhaul me the way you want to overhaul me? And the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is, He does. He takes the old and replaces new. He takes things like anger and bitterness and wrath and replaces them with things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And, and here's what Paul wants us to get this morning. That's not us. That is the work of God in us. You see, somewhere along the way, we got off the Protestant boat. We have no trouble by saying that Jesus Christ saves me by faith. But then we believe, well, you dress a certain way, you know, you button that top button. I hope nobody gets hurt by that top button. You button the top button. You carry that big black King James. You go to church and you clean up how you talk and you don't go to the place. And that's how I get made like Christ. And we miss the fact it's not about me. Because here's the fact you can't try hard enough, you can't work hard enough to change your heart. What we need is the power of Jesus Christ who makes us new. You know, the funny thing is on most of those shows, I don't see the people who own the houses doing the work. Oh, they might do a little bit of the easy labor. They might sand some drywall. They might do a few things like that. But somewhere there, there's a master architect, a master builder who's guiding the plan, who conceives of everything thing this space could be. And they say, you know what, you need to do this. And they do that, and the end result is this beautiful space that just, they could never conceive of. Or this amazing vehicle that, who knew, underneath all the rust and dings and dents and oil grease, could live again. Because we become the work Jesus Christ. In other words, we allow Jesus Christ to invade our space and make us new. Every single day. And that's the good news of Lent. We're taking a Lenten journey together. And you look this morning and you see the purple all about. And you should. Because purple is the color of repentance. And if I can be real for just a moment. What repentance means, and that's exactly what Paul's talking about. And we talk about changing your mind about in other words, saying we're not going to reckon things the way we used to reckon them. We're not going to conceive of ourselves the way we used to. We're going to change our mind about. In other words, we're going to think like Christ and consider all things in terms of God's will for our life. The Lenten season is a time of examination. It's a time of reflecting. How much do I reflect Jesus Christ? How much does my life reflect Him? And if you want the quick thumbnail, what, what does that look like? Look at Galatians chapter 5 that I just quoted you. The fruit of God's Spirit in you. And by the way, this week I spent the week in Board of Ministry interviewing 11 candidates for ordination, 10 more for First District License. And one of our first district licenses said, well, the fruits of the Spirit. Time out, stop. It's not fruits. 
Okay? So if you're saying fruits, stop it. You're saying it wrong. It's fruit. It's Greek. I can read Greek. I translate Greek. I know. It's fruit. One fruit of God's Spirit in you. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Gentleness. Self-control. And ask yourself this morning, how much does that fruit look like me? Because when God's at work in us, that's what he's making us into. Now, in, in the guise of openness and honesty, I haven't always been the person you see up here. Someone said to me recently, not too long ago, and I can't think of the, it might have even been this week, I'll bet you used to be able to get a little hot every now and then. <laughs> yes, I can. Now, I'll tell you, in, in my younger days, there's some things I've done in fits of rage and anger I'm not real proud of. And I can tell you about them. It, it, I just did stuff because I wasn't yet then what God wants me to be. And I'd be lying to you if I said there aren't some times I still flat get just smoking hot. And all you need to do is ask the lady sitting in the room back there, she'll tell you. <laughs> but not like I used to. And not for the same things I used to. Because God is renewing day by day. Day by day. I heard a preacher say one time, he said, and you know the fact of the matter is, if we try to do this on our own, we'll mess it up every single time. We'll mess it up every single time. But if we allow God to invade our space, yes, there are things we have to do. Yes, we should be worshiping God together weekly. Can I get an amen? amen. Alright. Says in Hebrews, don't quit assembling yourselves together so that you might spur one another on the good works of Jesus Christ. That's why we get together to worship Him and move deeper and closer. We need to spend time in His Word because how does the Lord speak to us? How does this overhauling God speak to us? We find Him in His Word every single day. Right? Amen. Or is our Bible a decorator piece? We chose to go with the new carpeting and furniture. You can't get into us if we don't open it and read it. And we spend time before Him on our faces together praying. Those things that we do, not to check them off a list, but to create the space where he can work. And you know a funny thing, and I, I can't speak for you, I can only speak for me. I open that word and I read it, and you know what happens? It gets real uncomfortable in the interior space of my heart. Oh, there's times when he absolutely affirms, I, I can have a shot spell. But there's a whole lot more time when I read words like, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And I look in the mirror and it kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. Got a button collar. Because I realize I'm not there yet. And there's times I'll come home from the office and I'll rant and I'll rave and I'll walk and pace. And, 
and the Holy Spirit will pull me up by the little short hairs on the back of my neck and say something like, whose work is this anyhow? It's not about you. It's about me working in you. And I realize more often than I care to admit the times that you do the things you really don't want to be doing and shouldn't ought to be doing. Or maybe there's the slightly more insidious you don't do the things you know you ought to be doing but you just can't muster it up. Or if you were really right down dirty and honest with yourself, you don't look as much like Jesus Christ as you should at this stage in your journey. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is he wants to make all things new. The good news of Lent is that Jesus Christ came to this earth to bring into reality God's plan for an overhauled life. He came to bring light and hope and life to the darkness in which we live every single day. Jesus' death and resurrection is the gift of God to transform our darkness, to break the power of sin, to bring healing to our broken lives. You see, He came to reconcile us to God. He came to fix that relationship that we so desperately need that we can't do on our own. Jesus Christ did in the cross. He came to restore our broken relationship with Him and make new life possible. You see, that grace, that free gift that only He gives us, is that same gift that transforms our brokenness. That renews our sinfulness. That cleanses us from the stain and the yuck. And makes all things new. Thank you. So I want to ask you this morning. Will you receive that gift? See, all we have to do is repent, which means to change, to say, God, you know, I've been going this way, but by your grace, I'm going to go crossways. I don't mean crossways this way. I mean crossways. Crossways. Now, notice, when we say repent and change our mind about that doesn't mean that we set our mouth just right. We try really, really hard. And we struggle to clean ourselves up. That means we say, God, I receive the gift that you're about to give me. And say yes to whatever it is you want to do in me. To give you the things you want to take away. To receive the things you want to bless me with. To allow you to do the work of cleansing me. And you can think of it like this. I know just enough carpentry to get myself in trouble. And there's certain things that I can do. But if I want my house to look like one of those HGTV houses, i got to have somebody that knows. You know, when we wanted to take the knob and tube out of our house, we hired an electrician. 
Chuck came in and he rewired and he showed me what I needed to do. And when I needed to patch the holes in the walls, I had a painter guy who knows how to do stuff say, here's what you need. He showed me how to do it. And I let him do his thing. When we went in the kitchen cabinets installed, I called a guy who knew how to, and I helped him. I was the muscle, but oh, I could see his face. Anyhow, he took this house that's 100 years old, that there's not a square angle to anywhere, and showed me how to hang cabinets in the kitchen so they look the way they're supposed to look and operate the way they're supposed to operate. You go to the ones who can do the things you want them to do. And if we would be everything that God would have us to be, we go to the one who can do it in us. And we receive from him the gift of his Holy Spirit and allow him to do his work in us. There's one simple word we need to learn. I'm going to teach you a brand new word this morning. Are you ready to learn a brand new word? Okay, I want you to focus right here. Because it gets really intense. When you're learning a new language, it gets really Because we're talking Christ language, right? The new word is yes. Say it after me. Yes. yes. Now, not yes to the world. Yes, Lord. Say it after me. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Because he wants to do that work in you. Making all things new. And this morning, I don't care whether you've been following Jesus Christ for 65 years. Or you sit here and say, you know what? know what Pastor is quite talking about, but I want that. Mm -hmm. He does that work in us from day one. Until mm -hmm. yeah. day none. <laughs> it's that daily walk, and the word again is, yes, yes Lord. Lord, whatever you ask. Whatever it is you want me to let go of, Whatever it is you want me to receive, whatever it is you want me to stop, whatever you want to do, it's yes, Lord. And he promises to make you a new creation.